Okay, so this is our first unit. It's called the Scientific Method and Microscope. And you're probably familiar with it because you studied it in life science in seventh grade. So first we're going to talk about, in the first half of the unit, about the scientific method. Those steps that you go through in order to solve a problem, which are observations. We make some observations about something. This leads us to questions that we may have about a certain situation. From those questions, we can develop a hypothesis. And then we can test the, the hypothesis through experimentation. And through experimentation, we collect data, we measure, we observe, and then we draw conclusions. And we share them out with a group of people. So let's get started. You have your note packet in front of you. And as I said, what we're going to study in this unit is the formal process that is used to investigate patterns make connections and create theories and that is known as the scientific method. To be accurate, a scientific study must only alter one variable at a time. That's really important and that's called the independent variable and that must be compared to the usual or expected which is called the control group. And then we often use a microscope to observe details that we can't see with our naked eye. And that's why the other half of this is called the microscope. So there's some vocabulary in this unit. The vocabulary words here on the left, you're going to have a quiz, Tuesday, September 9th. So write that in your note packet. And I'm going to show you where these vocabulary words are on Schoology so that you can study them. And then the microscope vocabulary words, we are going to have a quiz on Friday. September 12th. So that's two quizzes next week. One Tuesday and one Friday. So make sure you wrote that down. Let's talk about the steps for conducting a scientific experiment. Well, the first step is to figure out what the problem is. And that's basically, what are you testing for? The second step is your hypothesis, or state your hypothesis. And this is, what is your prediction? So what do you think will happen? The third step is conduct an experiment. And this is basically what did you do and how did you do it? The next step are your observations and data. So this is what did you observe, measure, and record?
And the last step, of course, is your conclusion. What did you find out and how did you prove it? Okay, so those are our steps. Now, before conducting an experiment, you must formulate a hypothesis. And as I just said, a hypothesis is a prediction of the outcome. what you think will happen. You don't have to be correct in your prediction. That's why we're doing the experiment. your experiment will either support or negate, meaning disagree with, your hypothesis. And if you recall from middle school, hypotheses are usually written in the form of if dot 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 then statements. So here's some examples. If you eat breakfast, then you will stay awake during block class. First block first period block class. If a plant is watered every day, then it will grow. If you practice your basketball skills, then you will become a better player. I want you to take the time now and come up with an example on your own and write it in the space provided. And then at our next class, we'll share some of those responses that you came up with. So you can pause me for a minute, write your response, and then continue. So let's go through some of this again. So when you're writing a lab report, okay, we write it in the form of the scientific method. So you have a title of your lab, and it's usually the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. In, and then this is usually some type of 
population. So it could be in goldfish or in, I don't know, 16-year-old boys. So that's usually the effect of the independent variable, whatever it is we're changing or testing, on the dependent variable in some type of population. Then you write your hypothesis. If this happens, then this will happen. Your independent variable is the variable that is being tested. What do you want to test or change? So this is variable tested. And in parentheses you can put changed. It's also referred to as experimenter. That would be you. Changes it. The dependent variable is what is affected by the change. What is affected by the change. Experimenter, that's you. Has no control over this. So let's use an example here. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Here's a question. Does drinking monster energy drinks increase the rate at which you read science content compared to not drinking monster. So that's a good question, okay? Does drinking monster energy drinks increase the rate at which you read science content compared to not drinking monster? Well, in that statement, there's only one variable the monster drink. There's one specific task. Does that have effect on reading rate? That would be a good question. Now, if I said, will monster drink, exercise, and classical music improve your rate of reading of science content, that wouldn't be a good question because I'm saying, will monster, exercise, and classical music. I'm changing too many things. So I only want to change one thing. So if this was our test, okay, our title could be, so what would we be changing the amount of monster drink, right? So let's put up here, we'll give an example over here. The effect of drinking monster energy drink on reading rate and we need a population and let's say 16 year old male males. There we go. The effect of drinking monster, so there's our independent 
variable energy drinks on reading rate. So this is our dependent variable. And this is our population in 16-year-old males. So the variable that we're testing is monster energy drink. I'm just giving you an example here so you can see it in um, practice. The dependent variable would be the reading rate. Okay. What is going to be our control group and our experimental group? So, the control group does not change. So, in this case, we have to have a group of 16-year-old boys who drink nothing. So, they're not getting any energy drink. Experimental groups, well, the experimental groups are the changed condition. So this is going to be group of 16-year-old boys who drank Monster. Okay, the levels of the independent variable would be changing the amount in this case. Changing the amount. So, in the case of this example, it might be one can, two cans, etc. So we might have several groups of boys. Say we have three groups of boys. Our control group who drank nothing. Another group of boys that drank one can and we see what their reading grade rate is. And then another group of boys where they drank two cans. Repeated trial size. So more trials increases the validity of the experiment. More trials increases the validity of the experiment. And controlled factors. Factors that stay the same. So in this case, um, in our example, maybe we want same flavor monster. That should be consistent throughout. Maybe same size can. Um, same test group. So, in this case, we're saying all boys, all boys, 16. Okay? So, those are examples of controlled factors. Okay, we are going to stop here for tonight, and stay tuned for the next lesson.